So the first thing we want to do is we want to um, format this value here. Okay, so that's our presence value. So an account with present value, present value. So we have it here. Where is it? <coughs> All right, so an account with an account with present value, present value. So we have to format this value here. And we can do that with a format function. So I'm going to call the format function around this present value, you know, you know, value, right? And the, the format function basically takes in a couple of arguments. It, take, it takes in what you want to format, okay, which is basically my present value, and how you want it formatted in double quotation as a format string. Okay, so it's as a format string with format specifies in, in it. So I'm going to basically specify how I want it formatted in this double quotation, okay, in this format string by placing format specifies or, or basically placeholders in here. So basically this, this is how I want it, or <coughs> yeah, this is how I want it formatted. Uh, let's see. Well, well, basically, to, in, in short, right, not, not to confuse you, the format function takes in basically what you want to format and how you want it formatted, okay, in double quotations. <coughs> right. I think I, I was over explaining it because Java, uh, Java also has it a bit different. Go over here, it's just what you want to format and how you want it formatted. So I want the present value, first of all, I want it formatted to, to two decimal places, so, so it looks like a row dollar amount. And the way I do that, well, well, first of all, before that, I want it formatted as a float. We know it's a float here, right? So I want it formatted as a float because, you know, this value is itself as a float. So I'm going to type in F to represent float. Now I want it formatted to two decimal places. You can see it's formatted to one decimal place, right? But I want it by default formatted to two decimal places. And so I'm going to type in 0.2 right in front of the F. 0.2 standing for or representing two decimal places. If I wanted it, to f wanted it formatted um, to, 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 th uh, to three decimal places, I'd say 0.3. But I want it formatted to two decimal places, I'd say 0.2. Um, and, I'm, and so basically this is the precision, okay, and I'm specifying it before the, flow, the type, okay? So precision before the type. Also, I want a dollar sign in front of this value, right? So I'm going to put in a dollar sign right here. An account with present value. Yeah, I'm going to put in, um, well, before that, let's see. All right, we'll, fi we'll fix the dollar sign in a, in a second, all right? Because if we do this, you know, we might have a space in front of it. All right, so we'll fix the dollar sign in a second. That's because we created a we created a, 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 str a string. Okay, that's why it's not. It's, 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 but we'll fix that in a second. All right. So format. Um, so to, so as a float to two to two decimal places. So that's done. If we put the dollar sign here, because each of these arguments are separated with a space when they are displayed, we're going to have a dollar sign, a space, and any amount. We don't want that, right? We want the dollar sign attached close to the amount itself. So let's create a string here, right? As a second argument, let's create as a second argument here. Let's create a string, okay, of a dollar sign, okay, and then concatenate it to the formatted version of present value. What is being returned by the present value? Um, um, f the f the format function, basically, the, basically the fo the formatted version of present value. So let's do and and that will basically keep it close to the f to the value. All right, so that's th that's the present value formatted. Let's try it. Let's try it and see. So I'm going to type in ten thousand dollars and see if that's going to be formatted. Two percent, twelve month. Okay, and we can see that an account with present value. We can see it's ten thousand dollars. Only thing is, it's missing a comma, right? It's missing commas, right? Now I want I want it displayed with commas where necessary. Okay, so if the amount is a million dollars, I want it to automatically put in commas where necessary. And the way I do that is I type in a comma before the precision before the type. Okay, so a comma before the precision before the type. And that's going to automatically put commas where necessary. And so when I run this, type in $10,000, 2%, 12 month, we can see that we have a real amount here. So an account with present value $10,000, we can see the commas there automatically. Now let's focus on the two, 0 0.2 monthly interest. Well, we don't want this to basically, we don't want this to be dis, to, uh, be displayed to the user as 0 0.02 monthly interest rate. We want it to, to be displayed as 2%, right? We can also format that. 
and it's been a while since I did that. Let me just make sure that it's uh, um, I remember it or it's um, oh that's correct. <laughs> All right, so where is it? That's the monthly interest rate. Don't worry, we'll fix the, um, you know, crossing this line you know, after we're done. So we have the monthly interest rate, and that's what we want to format, right? So I'm going to call the format function around it. And if we wanted something to be displayed as a percentage, we can just type in the percentage here, the percentage sign here, this way. And this is basically, what this is basically going to do is it's going to multiply the value, the 0 0.02 by 100. Okay, that's what it's going to do. It's been a while since I did that, so let's try that and see if um, that works. And I think it works, but let's just try it. Present value 10,000, 2% 12. And it's working. The only thing is, <clears throat> it's working. The only thing is it has lots of decimal places, right? So let's format it to one decimal place. Right, um, just in case the user types in, let's say, two point five percent or something. Okay, so let's let's format it to one decimal place. So we say point one. Oh, sorry, sorry. Before I think it's before that. Yeah. So let, let's just try this first. See if it works. It's been a while since I used the percentage sign, but let's try it and see. Yes, and it's working. All right. So just like this, we specify the position before the you know the type in this case we want that's a percentage so one the small place as a percentage and it's going to basically all it's doing is to, it's multiplying this amount by 100 when you use the percentage sign because you want to display that as a percentage and also you can see that it's actually put in the percentage sign at the end of it which is which is nice that's what we want um so we don't have to actually manually um you know do that but it, it knows that it's a percentage and it's putting it there so an account with present value 10,000 at, at a 2% monthly interest rate left in an account for 12 months. We don't have to format this because it's just going to be an integer, okay? 12 months, 2 months, okay? We'll earn you a future value of, now we need to format this as a, as a, as a monetary amount, and it's going to be just like the present value. It's, it's, you know, it's, we're going to format it as a monetary value, commas were necessary to two the small places as a float. So let's just do that too. The future value we have. So this is the this is basically the future value is basically what's resulting in this this calculation, and so we need to format the whole thing. So we need to call the format function around the whole thing. All right. So we can see that this is the future value. It ends. It starts and ends here. Starts here. Ends here. All right. And this percent this here we can see we can see that you can see that green highlight. Okay, this is the opening, closing uh, parentheses, and this is the closing parentheses for the format function, and this is the closing parentheses for the print function, and so the format function takes in what you want to format, which is this, and how you want it formatted, which is specified in, in double quotations. I want it formatted as a float to two the small places, put commas where necessary. And I also want a dollar sign in front of it. And in this case, same thing as this, we want to create a dollar sign, sorry, as a string, and then concatenate it to the return version of the formatted version, sorry, the formatted version of future, future value, right? All right, so let's try this before we fix the, it, if we fix it crossing the line, let's try it. So run this. Type in ten thousand dollars. Two percent for twelve months, and we can see that ten thousand dollars is formatted well. Two percent is formatted well, and the this is also formatted well. The only thing is we need to break it a little bit here. We need to break it somewhere here. Okay, so interest rate left in an account for twelve on an account in N. Let's break it where it says N. Over here. Left in in an account here. All right, so you can do this with a new line character, okay, which is a backslash n. Okay, so anytime, okay, so anytime it sees, anytime it sees, anytime the interpreter sees the backslash n, it creates a new line, right? The backslash starts an escape sequence. In other words, when you type in a backslash, it doesn't print it. The backslash is a special character. 
that starts start the sequence. It's expecting another character, one of the special escape characters, so that so that it does what it's what it's supposed to do. N happens to be one of the special escape characters. Anytime the N follows the backslash, a new line is created. So if you type in the backslash N together, okay, the backslash N together creates a new line. When the interpreter sees it, it doesn't print them, it just creates a new line, meaning it moves the position from here to the next line, and anything that comes after this black backslash N is displayed from that next line. Okay, so this backslash N is going to create a new line. And when I run it, Try it again. You can see that it's been broken. Um, it's a bit jumbled up, so I want to also create a line after the, the basically the questions, okay, or the the inputs. I want to separate the inputs and the output. And so after we, we know this is the function that's asking for the details. We know that, right? And we know this is the function that's displaying the output. Before, okay, so before this print function displays the output, we can basically type in a backslash n here. Meaning that before you start displaying the, an account, or before you start displaying the string here, there is a new line character. Okay, so the, the interpreter is going to see this. Okay, so once it's done, basically, once it's done displaying the, the, the uh, the questions for the user to type in the input, the, the the position will be here, right here, okay, right here, right here, and so when the interpreter sees the backslash n, it's going to create basically move to the next line. It's going to move from here to the next line here, right, and so anything that comes after the new line character is going to be displayed from this line going. In other words, by creating a new line here, we've we've created an empty line. Okay, so before you print the an account with print, you know all this, move the move the position to the next line and start displaying anything that comes after it. So when I run this, I'm typing. Let's just type in a million dollars. One two three one two three, for let's leave it uh, at um at a one percent interest rate, or let's say one point five percent interest rate. Let's leave it there for uh, twenty four months. Let's say two years, right? And it says an account. We can first of all we can see the line here, an empty line here. An account with a present value one million dollars at the one point five monthly interest rate left in an account for twenty four months with annual future value of one point four. So basically this amount, and we can see that it's working. Um, this is one way you can do it. All right, this is one way you can do it. Another way you can do it. Okay, so I'm going to remove this, and we are back to where we are. Okay, when I take this back, we are back because I've removed it. Another way you can do it. Okay is to anytime you call the print function itself and you type in or display something it's going to go ahead when you run this program and you type in you know, some values it's going to go ahead and display whatever you told it to print in this case it's, it's printing this okay now by default the print function always ends with a new line character meaning after displaying whatever you told it to display after displaying whatever you, whatever you told it to display, it's going to move the position from where it's at over here to the next line. Okay, and anything that comes after this print function will be displayed from that next line going. Okay, so we told it to print this; it's printed this. But in, but by default, the way the print function works, it works is it moves the position from where it's at over here at the end of the line okay, to the next line, and anything that comes after it, anything that comes after that print function, is displayed on the next line going. And so that's exactly what it what it's done. You can call the print function and then pass in nothing. In other words, you are telling the print function to print nothing on that line. So in other words, it's it's not going to print this. It's going to print nothing on this line. It's going to print nothing on this line here. But by default, because the print function always ends with, ends with a new line, after printing out nothing, it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. And anything that comes after that print function that prints nothing. Is going to be displayed from that next line going. So in other words, by calling the print function and passing in nothing, you are basically creating a new line and creating an empty line. And anything that comes after it will be displayed on that next line going. Okay. So when I run this, is also another way to create an empty line. So type in sixty-five dollars in my account right now at a five percent interest rate. I want to leave it there for twenty-four months or even twenty-eight months. 
uh, let's say 60 months. Hit enter. An account with present value $65 at a 5% monthly interest rate left in an account for 60 months will earn you a future value of 1002 right? And so we can see that it's working. Let's just fix this. Okay, remember we mentioned that you you know I want to try to keep 80, char 80 characters in a line, right? So I'm going to break this one somewhere around here. Before you break any line, you type in backslash and enter. And bring some of this back up here. Move this backslash because I haven't broken it. I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll just break it here. Type in a backslash, break it. Over here, I'll type in a backslash, break it. Same thing for this one. Type in a backslash here, break it. Um, yeah, this look this looks good. So before I break it, I type in a backslash, and I'm going to break this somewhere here too. So backslash, break it. All right, and we can see this is fun. So when I compile this, nothing has changed. Just we've we've we are trying to now keep 80 characters in a line. Okay, so type in some values. 4%, 34 months, $5, and, you know, $18. All right, so we can see this is working. All right, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them as always. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with a nice video. All right, then, bye-bye.